For a long time, the version of ICWM in FreeBSD was old and tired and needed updating. And lo and behold, a new version has dropped in, and we're going to have a look in this video. Right, the first thing you notice, how minimal ICWM is. And the menu at the bottom left hand corner is very Windows 95-ish. So have a look at what's available. There's a lot of entries on here because it's uh, on my main machine I installed it. So uh, it automatically pulled in the entries. You can right click and get the same menu. And the top uh, area is usually where your favorites go. Pressing the middle button uh, brings up the list of active windows which is quite useful in case you minimize something and you can't find it. And one thing I did find out, which I never knew, was if you press the Win key plus space, it brings up a like mini terminal at the bottom, so you can type in a command uh, if you can't find it or can't be bothered to look in the menu. So in this case, we're going to type in Firefox. And I'm just going to switch to the bigger view so you can see it, because it always makes it appear on another monitor. So I'm going to type in the command at the bottom. And you see Firefox appear. Try as I might, I can never get to appear on the uh, the central one. But so you can type in your command and uh, gain access to an application there. And that's pretty cool. I never knew that existed. I don't know how long they've had it, but it's a new one for me. Right. When you first install IceWM in FreeBSD, the .icewm folder in your home directory really doesn't contain anything other than a single text file. Oh, that's already a theme that I've installed later. I'll show you that later. Uh, it contains a theme configuration file, which denotes which theme is going to be the default that you use. The theme folder you can actually see there is one I added myself, and I'll show you that later. Speaking of themes, if you want some good themes for your uh, newly installed ICWM, if you go to box-look.org, they've got an absolute ton of themes to download, and not just for ICWM, but for all, all over the lightweight uh, window managers. Some really good ones too. I didn't show you here, but I downloaded the Windows XP one, which I'll show you in a bit. If you want to see all the configuration files available, if you go to user local share ICWM, and you'll get the default uh, settings. And what you could do is copy over all the settings there into your home folder version as I've just done now with the magic of filmmaking and you can then edit these particular files to your heart's content you don't edit the other files in the uh, user local share just doing the ones in your dot icewm and each particular one controls different aspects or like which appears in the menu and uh, your preferences your programs and even your toolbar so all, all can be configured and your preferences is uh, a particularly large configuration file. Um, you could play around with it and see what changes can be made. But one file which is not there is your startup file, which really denotes which programs you want to run when you start ICWM. So if you create it, which you'll have to do because it's not in your user local share. So you create a startup file. You set it to uh, to be an executable. You can either do this uh, as I'm trying to do on this uh, GUI based one. You can either click on executable that way if you want to do it that way. Or if you want to do, which I, I think to me is more preferable, you want to do it via the uh, terminal. It's fired up a switch terminal change the directory into the ICWM and there's what chmod plus x and then you start up and that's a lot to me it's, it's just a lot easier so now it's going to be run when the uh, ICWM starts up and I'm going to put an entry like all scripts you start with a shebang and forward slash bin sh Sleep, one, and uh, two ampersands. That basically stops the program from starting up too quickly. And the safe for instance, we want to put something, we'll just put redshift. And that was it. You could put whatever really application you want to run that start up there, but that's just an example.
And that... Did it for that? Ah, themes, yes. You do get some default themes. Uh, but the one that we added was Metro XP, which uh, will make the look like uh, a version of Windows XP. So let's go down to uh, themes. They're all uh, sorted in alphabetical order, which is pretty cool. Go down to, yeah, Metro XP. And I don't think that looks too bad. Um, the author of it is Italian, and I think uh, a little bit of changing in the in the configuration file of the is needed to translate it to English for the menu. But uh, yeah, it's fine. And these are some of the built-in other ones that you get with ISWM. Some of them are all right. I mean, the I think the uh, oh look, uh, an early version of Norm, pretty cool. Some of them are better than others, and I think really the default one is fine. If you want to use that, it's a dark one. That's not too bad. Uh, metal. Uh, looks like the default one to me. And Motive. Now, I Motive it would be my favourite because uh, I have an affinity to uh, Motive-based applications. I just like the way they look. Uh, yeah, go back to the default. So, yes. I don't find... I don't, actually don't think the default is too bad. It's given a whole plethora of uh, options on the toolbar at the top. You can minimise, maximise... Uh, and roll up, that's pretty cool. Right, if you want to change your wallpaper, there is no application uh, finer than Nitrogen if you want to use that, but I prefer using XV and the simple command line there, pointing to a directory um, where you store your wallpapers is, is good enough for me. And as soon as your uh, window manager starts, whichever lightweight min window manager it is, will have the same background, which is, uh, to me, is a lot handier. Let's have a look at the memory uh, usage for those who, who care. 351, not too bad. Not too bad. And simple screen recorder does uh, just take a, a chunk up. The one thing you can say about ISWM is it's not bloated. Preferences, you can either change the preferences as I've shown in the uh, config files, or you can change the preferences via a, uh, well, I'm going to say a simple, but a little bit confusing, GUI options. Uh, almost everything can be changed here. Uh, say, for instance, um, I don't know, opaque move. So you move a window by default, and uh, the contents move with the window. You change the if I can find where it is. If you change the opaqueness, it doesn't show up really in the uh, screen recorder, but the window itself moved uh, just as an empty box. So yeah, you can change almost all the uh, different aspects of the way it looks through that, which is pretty cool. And then once you're finished, you can save modifications. So, you know, it depends it depends how comfortable you are. If you prefer the, the old school way of doing it, by your text files, then that's fine. Or if you want a more GUI based approach, then that will offer a good alternative. Right, we'll just have a look at uh, the ISWM website, see what changes there are. Or what, at least, the standout features are. Oh, look, it was. Uh Oh, first done in 1997 by Marco Macek. I hope I haven't uh, butchered the name. So what is a f the, you, you get in ISWM? Uh, you get easy to use, simple to fast, standards compliant, fully usable with keyboard, alt tab window switch, inefficient, resource usage, taskbar, multiple workspaces, fully documented, a large number of themes, usable with Norman KD environments, menus automatically, sound support, multiple focus modes, manual placement windows, auto raising of windows option, tool tips and configuration, key bindings. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. 
I like Ice to be around. It takes me back a few years. It has been a good few years since I last used it, really. So that's the look at ICWM, uh, one of the latest versions at least, and FreeBSD. And it's good to see that uh, such an old and venerable uh, window manager is still being supported and developed. I think that's brilliant. And it's great news that it's been ported over to FreeBSD now. I've got to give credit where credit's due to the, uh, the good people at uh, FreeBSD and the porters and the developers who managed to put together this release. Excellent. I mean, ICWM uh, is from a, a time long ago. It's only 23 years. I mean, when you get as old as I am, 23 years goes in the blink of an eye. But in the terms of IT, 23 years might as well be 100 years. And it comes from a time when Windows, uh, was it like Windows 98, Windows 90, yeah, Windows 95 was still there. Windows 98 hadn't been released yet, I don't think. I'm getting my maths wrong. And that was a different world altogether. The, the PC architecture is completely different now. And... Uh, yeah, it's still there. And I think given the rise of single board computers uh, and other well, relatively low powered machines, I think something like uh, ISWM as a window manager would be perfect. I know a Raspberry Pi would benefit greatly from something like ISWM. So it would uh, it would be perfect for that scenario. But anyway, this is a quick look at ISWM. I haven't covered all the features. I haven't covered all the aspects of it. And that would take a video much longer than this. So we'll leave it at that. And I'll say thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.